So today I want to welcome you to a beautiful Sunday morning. Today I'm going to talk about asthma, the symptoms, the risk factors, what might trigger an asthma attack, and why it's so important to keep yourself informed. According to the WHO, 235 million people worldwide suffer from asthma. In the US alone, 25 million people have asthma, and of those 25, 7 million are children. So why asthma? Well, asthma is something that actually affects me personally. I do not have asthma, but a lot of people in my family do. My mom, my sister, my sister's husband, so my brother-in-law, and their child. My nephew also has asthma. He's eight years old now, and so his asthma is very well controlled at the moment, but we did have a lot of scares. Uh, so that's why I want to bring about this topic. A lot of people don't realize how important the environment actually is to asthma. Uh, a lot of people don't recognize the symptoms. A lot of people might not really know what it is. A lot of people might not recognize the difference between anxiety and panic attacks and asthma. And these are two things that kind of go hand in hand sometimes. Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about today. So stay tuned and let's begin. You ready? Okay. So the symptoms of asthma, what does it look like? Well, obviously you get a little tightness in your chest, you get shorter breath, and there's also wheezing. Another thing, it can be associated with chest pain, like right here, right in the middle of your chest. And it's not because you're having a heart condition, it's not because it's your heart, it's because your lungs are swollen and inflamed and it's causing pain. Among children, it is so important to recognize that asthma among kids or among anyone else can start as a cough in the middle of the night. So recognize the coughing in the middle of the night, especially among your kids, it's really important to start finding out whether or not your child has asthma. Okay, so what are the risk factors for you to actually have asthma and have an asthma attack? Well, there's a bunch, and I'm sure a lot of you already know a lot of these. Uh, allergens, such as pollen, uh, dust mites, cockroaches, yeah, I know it's disgusting, but yeah, cockroaches. Uh, also, flowers, uh, grass, also have indoor allergens like mold in your AC, if you have any pets, cats or dogs or birds, anything that can release some kind of dandruff is going to cause an allergy. Really, really furry carpets, that's another one. So these are important things to know. Both indoor and outdoor environments are really, really important. Air pollution is another one. Uh, three things that are not very well known and may not actually be recognized, but I want to talk about these because they're actually very important. Extremely cold weather, sometimes cold weather can cause your lungs to kind of like tighten up a little bit and it's going to induce an asthma attack. Another thing, exercise. If you're exercising vigorously, it can actually induce an asthma attack. So there is such a thing as exercise induced asthma and I'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. Um, then you also have extreme levels of emotion. So if you have extreme anger or extreme fear or if you start laughing hysterically, or if you just enter kind of like a state of panic, all of these things are going to induce an asthma attack. So it's important to know the triggers because once you know the triggers, you know that you need to prepare yourself to treat yourself or treat your family members if it actually happens. Aside from environment, genetics plays a huge component. So if your mom has it, if your dad has it, if your sister has it, you are more likely to have it. Uh, so these are things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, it's really, really important for you guys to start recognizing these symptoms. Another thing, luckily, I do not suffer from asthma, but like I said, a lot of my family actually does. So when I started looking to buy a dog, you can imagine uh, the stress and the commotion and the worry that I might kind of trigger an asthma attack. So today I want to introduce you guys to someone that I have been searching for for a very long time. Uh, he is a blue and white pied French Bulldog. His name is Kobe and I even opened him his own Instagram account. It's Kobe the cow dog and you'll see why in just a second why I call him the little cow dog because he looks like a little cow. So I'm going to pick him up in a minute. So this is Kobe the cow dog. As you can see he's all spotted and he's adorable. He is three months old so he may look big but he's actually a little baby. Um, I'm somewhat allergic to him. I do get itchy eyes. I do get the sniffles and the sneezing and the itchiness around the skin sometimes, but it's not as severe. My middle sister is also quite allergic to him. She also suffers from asthma. So we were really nervous to like what kind of effects it would have on the family. Uh, so it's, as always, if you do have asthma, it's really important to kind of keep a lookout on environmental things in your house that might be inducing these asthma attacks. Uh, something that really has really helped my nephew and my sister and my mom also with asthma is that they have a humidifier in their room and that has actually helped a lot with their allergies because allergies are actually one of the triggers of asthma attacks. 
So it's important to control for as many of these things as you can to avoid inducing an asthma attack. Um, one thing that my sister did, which was really important for my nephew and his controlled asthma, was that she always kept a record of everything. How many times he was having an asthma attack, how often, how much medication she was needing to give to control his symptoms, um, what times it was worse, around what environments it was worse, what was he doing when he had the attack. So all these things are really key components to being able to treat the asthma adequately because these are things your doctors are going to ask you about your kids or yourself. And so if you can answer these questions, a doctor can easily tailor uh, the treatment to you. So he can either change medication or add medication or remove medication altogether. Uh, so it's going to be really important for you guys to start recognizing these things for yourself. Um, so this is my little Kobe. And if you guys follow both of us on Instagram, you would see that I am completely obsessed. I have not actually been working or studying at the time because this little guy is taking up most of my time, which I'm really glad I did because I know that during residency, I'm not gonna have as much time to dedicate to him. I'm gonna put this little guy down. Yeah, yeah, he ate already and he went to the bathroom. He's being really good. I'm potty training him, right? Yeah. Okay. The last few things I wanna mention are these. Uh, there is such a thing called occupational asthma. What does this mean? If you notice that during the week you're having symptoms of asthma, but when it's the weekend and you're at home and you never have a symptom of asthma, there might be something in your working environment, either dust particles or shavings of some kind or something in the air conditioning, something in your work environment is causing the asthma symptoms during the week. So it's important to know when it's also happening and when it is not. That way you can kind of tease out what you should look into and what should you try avoiding. Uh, next, like I said, there is such a thing as exercise-induced asthma. This is something that actually happened to me. I was running outside in New York City and I was running really fast because I only had 20 minutes before I had to go be somewhere. So I went out and I was running extremely fast, but it was so cold outside. When I got back to my apartment, I felt severe tightness in my chest. I literally collapsed to the floor in pain. I started coughing, I could barely breathe. I got really scared, I had to call my family. I was freaking out. And as time went by, I was able to breathe a little more. I calmed myself down. So my symptoms weren't as severe, but sometimes I do have exercise-induced asthma. It's if it's really, really hot and humid outside and I'm exercising vigorously, the same thing happens. If it's really, really cold outside and I'm exercising rigorously, it also happens. So these are things that don't necessarily tell me, hey, you shouldn't be exercising so vigorously or exercise less or avoid exercise at all. No, this just means that if it does not resolve on its own, I would have gone to see a doctor, he would have given me a medication and I would have been very well controlled. So please, if you do suffer from exercise-induced asthma, this doesn't mean stop exercising. It means go to a doctor, get checked out, get medication prescribed, and you can exercise as vigorously as you want as long as you take the medication as prescribed. So this is a really, really important key factor here. Okay, next, I want to talk about something that's kind of beginning to get a little bit more interest, especially among people who don't want to use medications or go to a doctor and things like this. So the use of essential oils in the treatment of asthma. Uh, now, a lot of people say that lavender oil, uh, inhaled lavender oil is really good for the symptoms of asthma. A lot of people love using essential oils to kind of soothe the air and kind of help the somatics kind of breathe better. I do want to say this, be very, very careful. Anything that's going to pollute the air and reduce the quality of air on asthmatic is breathing can trigger an asthma attack. Another thing, a lot of people say, just apply some essential oils on your skin to open up the airways. Yes, sometimes it can happen, but other times a lot of people with asthma suffer from what's called hypersensitivity reactions. So you're going to put something on their skin first, make sure that they're not going to get an allergic reaction to it. So put it on a small localized area first and then see how that does, see how the person feels. Second, you have to dilute it. It cannot be concentrated oils because you're going to cause an allergic reaction. It's gonna feel warm, it's gonna feel tingly, it's gonna get red, it's gonna get itchy, and you can induce an asthma attack just because of those feelings of that they can't breathe. Um, lastly, the one other thing that I wanna say about these kind of like inhaled essential oils is that there has been some research done, and if, if children ingest between three and five milliliters of this stuff, it can actually induce seizures or induce a coma. So no, the point of this is not to freak you out to the point that you never touch an essential oil or you never buy an oil. What I want you to do is to use these things very, very intelligently, educate yourselves, ask your doctors questions, 
Test it with your kids with supervision of a doctor. Make sure it's gonna be okay for you if you're an asthmatic, your family members if they're asthmatics. So things like incense, essential oils, really strong candles, really heavy perfumes or Lysols, things like that. They can actually change the quality of air and induce an asthma attack. And the last thing that I wanna say is that asthmatics actually have been found to have comorbid or sometimes what we say is associated diseases in mental health. They suffer from anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, in fact, uh, people who have had severe asthma attacks are more likely to suffer from panic attacks later on. Uh, so like I said, just be very, very careful on what you use if you have an asthmatic in the house. Be very conscious of your environment when you have an asthmatic in the house. And above all, please don't feel like you're alone. So many people, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, suffer from asthma. It's a very difficult disease to deal with, especially if it's not well controlled. I do want to say that there have been studies and a lot, a lot of people, sometimes their symptoms get better as they age. Sometimes they even go away altogether. Sometimes they get worse. Sometimes they go away and they never have another asthma attack for years until they're much, much older in their adulthood and all of a sudden their asthma picks up again. So just be wary that just because you're not having asthma and you were prescribed an inhaler, make sure you always have it with you no matter where you're going because God forbid you have an asthma attack and you don't have your inhaler. Uh, so that's something that's really, really important. If you guys have any questions, please write down something below or follow me on Instagram and send me a DM, uh, a direct message, and I'll answer you through there. I will see you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see my future posts. And if you like this, please like it. If you didn't, that's okay. Just go ahead and hit this like and tell me what you hated about it. That way I can change it because I want you guys to like what I'm filming and I want you guys to like the content. That's the whole point of me doing this is for you guys to get something out of it, not for me. So if you guys don't like it, I'll change what I'm doing. Uh, you guys have a good weekend, well, rest of your Sunday, and have a great rest of the week. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. All have asthma, my nephew. Kobe. You <laughs> can't ride a ship. You also have. <laughs> uh, grass. You uh, in life. So this is really, really. What? Kobe.